welcome to Becoming the Community CEO. I'm your host, Roberto Candelaria. And over the past several years, I've partnered with leaders around the world to build highly engaged and profitable communities. Through this journey, I also discovered the characteristics that these communities had in common. And today, I'm here to share them with you. Together, we'll explore conversations around community building, partnerships, leadership, and profits. These are the core areas to becoming the community CEO. And now, let's jump into this week's episode. Well, hey, y'all, welcome to another episode of the show. And today we're going to be talking about money. Yes, money, moolah, cold, hard cash. <laughs> oh. And listen, the reason that we're having a conversation around money is really some of the phone calls I've been getting with uh, past clients, with peers. And as I've been getting these conversations, the opportunity to look back into my own life and my own experience. And so, Today, as I share some of this stuff, understand that, listen, this is probably not what you're used to hearing from coaches and and experts, Um, because while some of it will be the same, meaning like the reality is, is if you're in business, like how do you make money? You sell something, right? Um, But here's the thing. If you are a coach, if you're mentoring people, if you're a consultant, if you're an event producer, chances are you're getting some of these same calls when it comes to people acting funny with their money and 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 they're acting funny right because they're in a place where their 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 money's funny right and what happens is is when people get there they get into a place of reaction versus actually stopping getting out of the emotion being able to look at the fact and being able to go hey where do we go forward from here and, you know, Bob Proctor is one of our most recently ascended masters. And, you know, I just I got to meet Bob Proctor several years ago, several different times, got to speak on stages with him. And there's a few things that he shared with me that he shared with the world that really helped with my money mindset, helped where I was. And so I wanted to kind of start today uh, with these two as we dive in. And so number one that he shared that's really made an impact on me is that when you react, you are giving away your power. And when you respond, you are staying in control of yourself. And I think that that quote that, you know, that Bob Proctor shared, we can also take to our businesses that when we react, we're, we're giving away the business, right? That because the business is reactionary, that, that there's really not stability in it. And, but when we respond, right, when we respond to a plan, when we step back, right, we stay in control of the business, we stay in control of the situation. And so, like so many coaches, I've gotten the calls. And listen, (laughs) many years ago, um, we go back to when I was in the middle of 11 surgeries in 18 months, y'all, I made the calls, okay? So I've, I've been in the part of coach consultant receiving the calls. I've also, you know, 14, 15 years ago, been in the space where I was making them. And the calls sound like this. Now, if you've made these calls, listen, this this is not a, a shaming exercise. This is not a judgment. This is, I've been through this. I see people still doing this. And it is a hope to be able to bring some information and some clarity that will be able to help somebody that's listening. And so, y'all, I've made those calls where I was just like, hey, I have no money. There's no money. There's no money. Or, you know, I need $100 by, by 5 o'clock today. Or listen, I need $5,000 in the next three days. And until I get those $5,000, I can't think about anything else, right? And even just recently, two conversations that that come to mind is, you know, I was talking with a a very well-known person in the industry who reached out and was just like, hey, Roberto, listen, I've, I've got to make $10,000 in the next week in order for the business to do ABC And then I'll be okay. And my response was, what happens after the 10,000? I was like, what do you mean? Like, that's just what I need right now. And and that's when it went back to exactly people are thinking about only right now and not planning in their business. I'm also reminded of another phone call where a coach leading up to a live event, you know, they were trying to figure out some things with the hotel and 
you know, this wasn't their fault. Like the hotel, like pretty much played like a bait and switch on them in the situation and was like, well, hey, this is going on, this is going on, this is going on. We're under new ownership now. And the new ownership says, even though you have a contract, if you don't pay X in the next 24 hours, the hotel's going to cancel your event. Now, understand, this wasn't the fault of the coach, right? This was new hotel management shifting the agreement because they didn't want to honor the agreement that the previous management group had made. And this person had a decision to make do I come up with X dollars in 24 hours so that nothing changes, I can serve my community, or do we basically tell the hotel to go F themselves? So while this happens in business, and before we go deep, deep here, let me start by saying, as I've said just a few minutes ago, I've been here. I know what it's like, y'all. I know what it's like to not know where I'm going to buy my next meal, where the money's coming from for that next meal. I know what it's like to, in the middle of 11 surgeries in 18 months, to be living on an $832 a month social security disability check and $104 a month in food stamps. And I know what it's like to do what I call the dance of the pink envelopes. And listen, if you know and you know, like, you know, right? Now, for those of you that don't know, I pray that you never know that it's something that you never have to experience. But the pink envelope dance or the dance of the pink envelopes is this, is that You know, whenever it's your utilities, right, your electric, your gas, your water, your phone, like you, you, the cable, like, like the internet, you pick one, right? When you pay your bills on time, you get the white envelope. Most places. When that bill comes late, you get a yellow notice. If it's a little bit later than that, listen, you get the pink envelope. And then ultimately, oh my gosh, I hope that nobody ever experiences this, but Hey, I did at one point in my life, you get the red envelope. And the red envelope says, Danger Will Robinson, you better get your stuff together because this is about to get cut off like tomorrow. And I hope that you have not had that experience. I did. And let me tell you, you get very creative when you learn that the red envelope means this stuff's about to get cut off now. And the pink envelope means, hey, If I balance this correctly, if I plan here, I can make it that while I'm still going to pay my bill, I can pay this one this way and this one this way so that my stuff does not get cut off tomorrow. Now, I give that as an example of responding to be able to make a plan. And I am not proud of the fact that, you know, I was living on Social Security Disability and food stamps. It's where I was due to a bunch of medical stuff. And here's the thing. It taught me a lot. It taught me a lot about planning. It taught me a lot about money management. It also taught me a lot about the thing that we're going to talk more about today, which is money. Because you see, the quickest way to make money, the quickest way to bring an income infusion into your community, the quickest way to bring money into your bank account and into your business is to go out and sell something. Now, listen, I know that sounds crazy, right? I know it sounds crazy, but the quickest way to be able to do that is to go sell something. And some of you may be wondering what it is that you could sell today. And you probably freak out sometimes because you've been told that you need, you know, a fancy this or this fancy system or that thing over there. And here's the thing, you don't. What if we invited ourselves into a place that we get to start with what we know? that you get to start with what you know, and I get to start with what I know. And, you know, years ago, a dear friend, um, she is a mentor. She is a friend. She has become family. She's become a sister. Her name is Allison Bird. And she shared with me this phrase. And she said, Roberto, there is more money in what I know than what I do. And I remember her saying that, and it didn't click right away. I was like, there's more money in what I know than what I do. Like, I I did not comprehend right away. And over the years, the phrase has evolved for me into in this. There's more value in what I know than what I do. And if there's more value in what I know than what I do, then there's more value in what you know than what you do. And if we go just a little bit, you know, to another layer there, right, then it goes to this. There's deeper value in who I know and what they know. 
So back to selling. Y'all, it doesn't have to be something fancy. It doesn't need to be something that you created. It doesn't even got to be something that you personally make or touch. Now, a few quick ideas here. I'm going to share five of them, and I'll expound on this more in a future episode, but I want to invite you to write these down, right? There are five simple ways. You know, number one is affiliate revenue. And this is affiliate revenue either in terms of you promoting someone else's stuff or if you've got something, someone promoting yours. Now, if you're promoting someone else's stuff and you need money like yesterday, this is probably not the place to go. But affiliate revenue can become passive revenue that brings checks every single month. You know, in our business today, we still receive a commission from a software company that back in. I want to say it was either 2012 or 2013. I'd have to go back and dig. But 2012 or 2013, we did an event and we had Infusionsoft, which is now known as Keep, come to the event and they sponsored the event. And the way that we structured the sponsorship deal was that we got the sponsorship of the event, but we also did an affiliate commission for life. And you know what? There are still people today, nine, 10 years later, that I'm still making an affiliate commission and I get the the little notification and we get the PayPal and I'm just like, wow, this is something that we did about a decade ago. So number one's affiliate revenue. Number two is if we go to the there's more value in what you know than what you do is freelancing and consulting, getting paid for what you know to be able to help. And another layer of that, and like I said, we'll expound on these more in a future episode is number three is by teaching and coaching. Number four is reselling and wholesaling. I and mean, you could, this even falls into drop shipping, y'all, right? You can set up a, a Shopify store, set up a sales page, set something up on Etsy. And number five is print on demand. And print on demand has been huge for Octonation as Warren and the team build that. Print on demand has allowed them to get the message of Octonation out into the world with shirts and mugs and pillows and all of these different ways for people to spread the message of Octonation and also receive quality octopus merchandising, which we actually do not produce any of it. Um, We use an online vendor called Printful, sometimes Printify, that prints all of that. So those are five simple ways to be able to start making money as a community leader, as a business owner, as someone that's just starting in this little journey. And I say little journey, y'all, I I probably should take that back. I did not mean that in a way to demean anybody. So you're starting in this journey. And my friend Boudreaux says it this way. Um, Boudreaux is one of my favorite Cajuns in the world. And he says this. He says that too many people think with their PP. And because they think with their PP, their problem is their PP. Now, I've literally watched Boudreaux walk into a room full of car salesmen, and there might be one or two women in the room. It's usually a bunch of males, and Boudreaux will walk in, step on stage, and start his conference by saying, your problem is your PP." And it's amazing just to kind of watch everybody kind of chuckle and giggle and look around like, who is this guy and what's he about to tell us? But here's what it means. As a result, they don't get the desired outcome that they want when they're selling because the salesperson is too busy thinking about their problem and what the possibility of the sale or the transaction does for them, right? How it helps their money problem, how it pays their bill versus what they have or know that could solve someone else's problem and take them into their possibility. You see, and when we serve as community leaders, as community builders, as coaches, consultants, entrepreneurs, when we serve, we take people from their problem to their possibility. We win too. So you want to make more money in your business? Sell something. Find a way to solve people's problems and serve them. And as you do that, as you think beyond today, you know, not just the hundred out, the hundred dollars by five o'clock, or you know, five thousand in the next seventy-two hours, et cetera, et cetera. Right? When we do that, when we begin to sell more, when we begin to start to plan and to budget our sales, when you look at cash flow, when we look at numbers, that is when 
we can begin to see consistent revenue into the business. Now, you know, there are people that would say, but Roberto, I just have to serve. 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 And because I serve, there will be this automatic transformation and what happens. But I'll also tell you that my other favorite Bob Proctor quote is that there is no transformation without transaction. There is no transformation without transaction. Because you see, listen, most people, their, their, their money's not funny and they're not broke because they don't know what to sell or they feel that they have no one to sell to. It's oftentimes because they haven't shown up in their own life, their own business, and their own communities to bring value. And yes, I did say that sometimes they do not bring value to themselves. They don't acknowledge the value that they bring into the world that they are needed and necessary. And because they can't see the value and the amazingness that they are in the world, they cannot go and sell effectively because they don't believe what they're selling. You see, when we bring value to others, we can get paid. You will get paid. And so I'm curious, as we close out this episode today, how are you getting paid? What are you selling in your business and your community that provides a transformation for someone else that takes somebody out of their pain and into their possibility? I'd love to know. Send me a message, uh, shoot shoot me an email, a DM. I'd love to know more about what you're selling. And be sure to listen up to future episodes where we'll be talking more about those five ways that community leaders can make money online. Well, howdy, and thanks for listening to another episode of the show. Hey, if you'd love to stay in contact with us, visit robertoteaches.com to connect with me on social media, learn about our Facebook groups, and other places that we can connect to help you on your journey to becoming the community CEO. And if you're loving the show, do me a favor. I'd love for you to subscribe, rate, and give us a review on iTunes or your favorite podcast listening platform. 